Should be good. Um, so what is JavaScript? Uh, welcome to the MDN uh, Beginners JavaScript course. In this article, we will look at JavaScript from a high level, answering questions such as what is, or what is it, and uh, what can you do with it? Um, making sure you are comfortable with uh, JavaScript's purpose. So the prerequisites of this course are basic computer literacy, uh, basic understanding of HTML and CSS, um, objective to gain familiarity uh, with JavaScript, but uh, with what JavaScript is, what it can do, and how it fits into a website. <clears throat> High level definition. JavaScript is a scripting or programming language that allows you to implement complex things on web pages. Every time a web page does more than just sit there and display static information for you to look at, uh, displaying timely content updates, interactive maps, animated 2D or 3D graphics, um, scrolling uh, juke, jukeboxes, um, and etc. You can bet that JavaScript is probably involved. It is the third layer of the cake uh, of standard web technologies, two of which, HTML and CSS, we have covered in much more detail in other parts of the learning area. So HTML is the markup language that we use to structure and give meaning to our web content. For example, defining paragraphs, headings, and data tables, or embedding images and videos in the page. CSS is a language of style rules that we use to apply styling to our HTML content. For example, adding background colors and fonts and layering out our in columns. Uh, and JavaScript is a programming, uh, a scripting language that enables you to create dynamically updating content, control multimedia, animate images, and pretty much everything else. Okay, not everything, but it is amazing what you can achieve with uh, a few lines of JavaScript code. The three layers go on top of one another nicely. Let's take a simple text label as an example. Mark it up using HTML to give it structure and purpose. Sorry, where are, what page are you on? Sorry, uh, I just jumped a bit No up. worries, we're on, uh, so if you go to, this is a this is a good question. So if you go to um, developer Mozilla, yeah, if you go to developer.mozilla.org forward slash learn, um, and then you go to what is JavaScript is in this drop down right here. Scroll down a little bit and go to this drop down right here. Um, Wait, where? All right, so you go to developer.mozilla.org and go to oh, um, mm -hmm, down a little bit and then go to um where it says JavaScript dynamic scripting. And uh, in the first tab, where it says JavaScript first steps and what is JavaScript, we're right here. And we are actually in the uh, first, uh, second, uh, we're actually in the beginning. So if you go to like the first uh, topic, um, right here, where it says in the first code example. Oh, okay, I'm here. And um, ladies and gentlemen, please open your uh, text editors and follow along. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so open up my text editor, VS Code. And let's see, it says the three layers built on top of each other nicely. Let's take an example, a simple text uh, label as an example. We can mark it up using HTML to give it a uh, structure and purpose. So. So our template is going to be in your um, code. What you should have is you should have uh, HTML. Uh, you should have a so an index.html file. You should have a uh, main.js file, and you should have a styles.css file, and you should have uh, your main.js file should side of a scripts folder and your styles.css uh, file should be inside of your styles folder. And also let's put a images folder in there just uh, 
just uh, in case. Okay. Um, so let's see. So we have on line one in our text.html file, we have a p tag with player one, uh, Chris. And so let's see. So we have that. Yep. And I just named it John. And then make sure that you have your, uh, put your, make sure that you put your, your link to your, to your JavaScript uh, in the body, like at the bottom. So it should say like script source equals script uh, scripts, which is the name of your folder, and then forward slash main.js. Uh, also link to your styles. You know, you should know how to link to your style sheet um, by now if you're doing JavaScript with us. Um, but in case you don't, just use this right here. So let's proceed. So inside of it, we are going to, you can just copy and paste this in there. Um, inside of your styles, okay? And then what I want you to do is, uh, I want you to, and then finally, it says, so it says we can add success into the mix and make it look nice. And finally, we can add some JavaScript to implement dynamic behavior. So if we open this in, uh, I open this up in my live server, what we'll see is, We'll have a button, and if we click on it, I can change, uh, it'll say enter a, name, a new name. I'll click enter, and it'll change the name of player one. Um, so it says try clicking on this last version of the text label to see what happens. And it says note. Uh, also that you can find this demo on GitHub uh, and you can see the source code or run it live. So JavaScript can do a lot more than that. Let's explore more in detail. I'm gonna pause the video. So I'm gonna say that again. So yeah, this is the basic setup of like uh, web development. You should always have like an images folder for your images, a scripts folder for your JavaScript and a styles folder for your CSS. And then once you have that, make sure that you have, once you have those folders set up, make sure that within your scripts folder, you have a folder or, or a file called main.js. And this is where your JavaScript is gonna live. And then make sure you also have a, uh, a, a styles.css folder in your, in your styles, I mean a styles.css file in your styles folder. And uh, also oh, don't forget to put the, uh, to make an index.html file, and that's just going to go in the in the in the root or in your project folder. Okay. How's everybody doing? What's the name of the file in the scripts folder? The file and it should be uh, main.js. Main.js, okay. I can not remember. Also, also don't forget to don't forget to at the bottom of your body, don't forget to link to it with a script uh, source equal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, JS and then styles is styles.css, right? Yeah, that's your uh, CSS folder. That's where all your CSS is going to live. All right. Uh, Start streaming too.
how's everybody doing? Everybody got it set up? Uh, just link in the CSS now. Okay. The cool thing about uh, like VS Code is um, usually like the link it uh, um, like it, it's called styles.css already, and I think the JavaScript is also called styles.css. So if you just do the template, I think those should already be in there, which is nice. But this is so this is like your basic template right here that you're gonna use like throughout um this um these examples. All right, um I'm ready. You ready? Uh Crystal? Is it Crystal? Yeah, I think I'm good. Okay. So what can it really do? Um, the core JavaScript language consists of common uh, programming features that allow you to do things like uh, store, uh, for example, like store useful values inside variables. Um, in the above example, for instance, we ask for a few, uh, we ask for a new name to be entered, then store that name in a variable called name. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just fix this. Uh, live with, Boom, baby. All right, so operations. So yeah, that's what a variable does. We store the value inside a variable. Um, in the above example, for instance, we ask for a new name to be entered, then store that name in a variable called name, right? Um, so uh, another feature uh, is that uh, we used was uh, the operations on pieces of text known as strings uh, in programming. In the above example, we take the string player one um, and join it to the name variable to uh, I'm, gonna put it, I'm gonna put it so like we can see both screens at the same time. I like that better. Uh, makes it easier so that, you know, when we're watching this in the future, we're able to see like, oh, okay, so that's what that does, right? All right, boom, baby, let's get it. All right, operations on pieces of text known as strings in programming. In the above example, we take the string player one, and join it to the name variable to create the complete text label. Uh, for example, player one, Chris. Running code in response to certain events occurring on a web page. We used a click event in the example above to detect when the button is clicked and then run the code that updates the text label and much more. What is even more exciting, however, is the functionality built on top of the core JavaScript language. So-called application programming interfaces, APIs, provide you with extra superpowers to use in your JavaScript code. APIs are ready-made sets of code building blocks that allow a developer to implement programs that would otherwise be hard to or impossible to implement. They do the same thing uh, for programming that ready-made furniture kits do for home building. It is much easier to take ready cut panels and screw them together to make a bookshelf than it is to work out the design yourself. Go and find the correct way and cut all the panels in the right place or in the right size shape and find the correct screws and then put them together to the bookshelf. Uh, they generally fall into two categories. Uh, so you have third party APIs and browser APIs. So browser APIs are built into your web browser and are able to expose data from the surrounding computer environment. 
or do useful complex things. For example, uh, the DOM, Document Object Model API, allows you to manipulate HTML and CSS, creating, removing, and changing HTML, um, dynamically applying new styles to your page, etc. Every time you see a pop-up window appear on a page or some new content displayed, as we saw above in our simple demo, for example, that's the DOM in action. Uh, the geolocation API retrieves geographical information. This is how Google Maps is able to find your location and plot it on a map. Uh, the Canvas and Web Geo APIs are, are allow you to create animated 2D and 3D graphics. People are doing some amazing things using these web technologies. Uh, see Chrome experiments and Web Geo samples. Um, audio and video APIs like HTML media element and WebRTC allow you to do really interesting things with multimedia, such as play audio and video right in the web page or grab video from your web camera and display it uh, on someone else's computer. Try our simple snapshot demo to get the idea. Uh, side note, not too many, uh, many of, excuse me, many of the above demos won't work on an older browser. Uh, when experimenting, it's a good idea to use a modern browser like Firefox, Chrome, Edge, or Opera to run your code in. You will need to consider cross-browser testing in more detail when you get closer to delivering production code, um, real code that real customers will use. Uh, Third-party APIs are not built into the browser by default, and generally, and you generally have to grab their code and information from somewhere on the web. For example, the Twitter API allows you to do things like displaying your latest tweets on your website. Um, the Google Maps API and OpenStreetMap API allows you to embed custom maps into your website and other such functionality. Note, these APIs are advanced and will not be covering any of these in this module. You can find out much more about these in our client side web APIs module. There's a lot available to, there's a lot more available too. However, don't get overexcited just yet. You won't be able to build the next Facebook, Google Maps, or Instagram after studying JavaScript for 24 hours. There's a lot of basics to cover first, and that's why you're here. Let's move on. What is JavaScript doing on your page? Here, we'll start actually looking at some code. And while doing so, explore what actually happens when you run some JavaScript on your page. Let's briefly recap the story of what happens when you load a web page in a browser, first talked about in our How CSS Works article. When you load a web page in your browser, you are running your code, uh, the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript inside an execution environment. The browser tab, this is like a factory that takes, a, that takes in raw materials, the code, and outputs a product, the web page, JavaScript is executed by the browser's JavaScript engine. After the HTML and CSS have been assembled and put together into a web page, this ensures that the structure and style of the page are already in place by the time the JavaScript starts running. This is a good thing, as a very common use of JavaScript is to dynamically modify HTML and CSS to update a user interface. Uh, via the document object model API, as mentioned above. If the JavaScript loaded and tried to run before the HTML and CSS were there to affect, then errors would occur. <coughs> browser security, each browser tab is its own separate bucket for running code. And these buckets are, excuse me, these buckets are called execution environments in technical terms. This means that in most cases, the code in each tab is run completely, sep completely separately, and the code in one such tab, in one tab, cannot directly affect the code in another tab or on another website. This is a good security measure. If there, if this were not the case, then pirates would could start writing code to steal information from other websites and other such bad things. There, note, side note, there are ways to send code and data between different websites, uh, tabs in a safe manner, but these are advanced techniques that we won't cover in this course. JavaScript running order. 
When the browser encounters a block of JavaScript, it generally runs it in order from top to bottom. This means that you need to be careful what order you put things in. For example, let's return to the block of JavaScript we saw in our first example. Uh, so we have const par, uh, so all right. So here we are selecting a text paragraph one, uh, then attaching an event listener to it, uh, line three. So, so in line one, we're selecting a text paragraph. Okay, uh, then attaching an event listener to it uh, in line three, so that when the paragraph is clicked, uh, the update name code block lines five through eight uh, is run. The update name code block, uh, the update name code block, these types of reusable code blocks are called functions. Ask the user for a name and then insert that name into the paragraph to update the display. If you swap the order of the other two lines of code, it would no longer work. Instead, you get an error returned in the browser developer council. Uh, type error para is undefined. This means that the para object does not exist yet, so we can't add an event listener to it. Side note. This is a very common error. You need to be careful that the objects referenced in your code exist before you try to do some stuff. Uh, uh, excuse me, you try to do stuff to them. Interpreted versus compiled code. You might hear the terms interpreted and compiled in the context of programming. In interpreted languages, the code is run top to bottom and the result of running the code is immediately returned. You don't have to transform the code into a different form before the browser runs it. Compiled languages, on the other hand, are transformed, compiled, into another form before they are run by the computer. <clears throat> For example, C and C++ are compiled into assembly language that is then run by the computer. JavaScript is a lightweight interpreted programming language. Both approaches have different advantages, which we won't discuss at this point. Server-side versus client-side code. You might also hear the terms server-side and client-side code, especially in the context of web development. Client-side code is code that is run on the user's computer. When a web page is viewed, the page's client-side code is downloaded, then run and displayed by the browser. In this module, we are explicitly talking uh, about client-side JavaScript. Server-side code, on the other, other hand, is run on the server. Then its results are downloaded and displayed in the browser. Examples of popular server-side web languages include PHP, Python, Ruby, ASP.NET, and JavaScript. <laughs> JavaScript can also be used as a server-side language. For example, in the popular Node.js environment, you can find out more about server-side JavaScript in our dynamic websites server-side programming topic. Dynamic versus static code. The word dynamic is used to describe both client-side JavaScript and server-side languages. It refers to the ability to update the display of a web page app or app to show um, different things in different circumstances, generating new content as required. <clears throat> Server-side code dynamically generates new content on the server. For example, uh, pulling data from a database, uh, whereas client-side JavaScript dynamically generates new content inside the browser on the client. Uh, for example, creating a new HTML table, filling it with data requested from the server, then displaying the table in a web page shown to the user. The meaning is slightly different in the, con in the two contexts, but related. And both approaches, server-side and client-side, usually work together. A web, a web page with no dynamically updating content is referred to as static. 
it shows the same content all the time. How do you add JavaScript to your page? So JavaScript is applied to your HTML page in a similar manner to CSS, whereas CSS uses link elements to apply external style sheets and style elements to apply internal style sheets to HTML. JavaScript only needs one friend in the world of HTML, the script element. Let's learn how this works. Internal JavaScript. First of all, or, or number one, first of all, make a local copy of our example file apply javascript.html. Save it in a directory somewhere sensible. Okay. So I'm going to go here and download this. And uh, I'm going to close this. And I'm going to open up my web projects folder. And code. And also, I'm going to go over here to this and I'm going to download. All right, so I'm just going to make a new folder inside of my web projects folder. I'm going to call it uh, MDN. So I'm going to do make their MDN. So we now have a folder called MKDIR MDN. And uh, also what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the uh, folder that we made earlier. I'm just going to copy all of this uh, over into that MDN folder. So I'm going to copy and paste. Delete the paragraph that we put in there earlier and delete all the CSS. Save that. Save that. And I'm going to delete the JavaScript that we added as well. And control S. You know what I should have did? I should have put a um, all right, cool. So now it says copy this. Right, so I'm just going to copy what's in the body button clicking. Copy that. And then put it in the body. Uh, number two, open the file in your web browser and in your text editor, you'll see that the HTML uh, creates a simple web page that contains a clickable button. So I'll close my live server and open it back up. You will see that you will have a clickable button. Let's click me and I can click it. All right, cool. So um, next, number three, next, go to your um, text editor and add the following in your head just before your closing uh, head tag. Um, so we're gonna add a script file in the head. Oh, uh, delete the, my old script file. So let's see, add it to the head. All right, number four. Now we'll add some JavaScript inside our script element to make the page do something more interesting. 
uh, add the following code just below the uh, the two forward slashes, uh, the, the, the comment that says JavaScript uh, goes here line. Uh, and number five, save your file and refresh the browser. Now you should see when you click the button, a new paragraph is generated and placed below. So let's check that out. Oh, cool. Look at that. All right. All right. Side note if your example doesn't seem to work, Go through the steps again and check that you did everything right. Did you save your local copy of the starting code as a .html file? Did you add your script uh, element just before the head tag? Did you enter the JavaScript exactly as shown? JavaScript is case sensitive and very fussy. So you need to enter the syntax exactly as shown. Otherwise, it may not work. Um, note, you can see this version on GitHub as apply uh, apply JavaScript internal .html, see it live too. So I suggest that you guys, not the guys that's with me right now, but uh, for whoever's watching this, I suggest that you actually type in the code instead of copying it to get a better sense of uh, um, how to write code. All right, so exter external JavaScript, this works great, but what if we want, wanted to put our JavaScript in an external file? Let's explore this now. Uh, number one, first create a new file in the same directory as your sample HTML file. Call it script.js. Um, let's call it script.js. Make sure that it has the .js file extension, file name extension as that's how it is recognized as JavaScript. Okay. So let's uh, create a, so I'm gonna go down here to my terminal and I'm gonna create a script.js. Wrong spot, so I got a CD. CD into MDN and touch script. Right. So now we have a script.js. file in our directory. Okay. Um, it says, uh, replace number two, replace your current script element with the following. Okay. So I'm going to copy this over. Inside script.js, add the following script. Okay. Save your browser and you should see the same thing. It works just the same, but now you've got your JavaScript in an external file. This is generally a good thing in terms of organizing your code and making it reusable across multiple HTML files. Plus, the HTML is easier to read without huge chunks of script dumped on it, dumped in it. Uh, side note, you can see this version on GitHub, uh, inline JavaScript handlers. All right, so note that sometimes 
you'll come across bits of actual JavaScript. Uh, well, let's check this out real quick. Wanna... All right, so it's the same thing. Right. So note that sometimes you'll come across bits of actual JavaScript code living inside HTML. It might look something like this. Uh, okay. Uh, you can try this version of our demo below. So I click on this and paragraph is put below it. Display below it. All right. This demo uh, has, ag has exactly the same functionality as in the previous two sections, except that the button element includes an on-click handler to make the function run when the button is pressed. Uh, please don't do this, however. It is bad practice to boot your HTML with JavaScript, and it is inefficient. You'd have to include the onclick uh, create paragraph attribute on every button you wanted the JavaScript to apply to. Using pure JavaScript construct, construct allows you to select all the buttons using one instruction. The code we used above to serve this purpose looks like this. Uh, this might be a bit longer than the onclick attribute, but it will work for all buttons, no matter how many are on the page, nor how many are added or removed. Uh, the JavaScript does not need to be changed. <clears throat> Side note, try editing your version of apply-javascript.html and add a few more buttons into the file. When you reload, you should find that all the buttons when clicked will create a paragraph. Neat, huh? All right, so let's see. Let's go to uh, right here. It says edit this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to more times. Save that. Or would you look at that? Oh, and every time you press one of them, it just keeps on. Uh, script loading strategies. There are a number of issues involved with getting scripts to load at the right time. Nothing is simple. Nothing is as simple as it seems. Um, <clears throat> the common problem is that all the HTML on a page is loaded in the order in which it appears. If you are using JavaScript to manipulate elements on the page, or more accurately, the document object model, uh, your code won't work if the JavaScript is loaded and parsed before the HTML you are trying to, uh, you are trying to do something to. Um, in the above examples, in the internal and external examples, the JavaScript is loaded and run in the head of the document. Uh, before the HTML body is parsed. Uh, this could cause an error. So we've used some constructs to get around it. In the internal example, you see, you can see this structure around the code. All right. This is an event listener which listens to the browser's DOM content loaded event, uh, which signifies that the HTML is completely loaded and parsed. JavaScript inside the, this block uh, will not run until after that event is fired. Therefore, the error is avoided. You'll learn more about events later in, this in the course. <clears throat> In the external example, we use a more modern JavaScript feature to solve the, the, the problem. Uh, the async attribute, which tells the browser to continue downloading the HTML content once the script tag element has been reached. 
you see right there. In this case, both the script and the HTML will load simultaneously and the code will work. Note, in the external case, we did not need to use the DOM content loaded event because the async attribute solved the problem for us. We didn't use the async solution for the internal uh, JavaScript examples because async only works for external scripts. An old fashioned solution uh, to this problem used, uh, an old fashioned solution to this problem used to be to put your script element right at the bottom of the body. For example, just before the body tag, so that it would load after all the HTML has been published. The problem with the solution uh, and the DOM content loaded solution uh, seen above is that loading parsing of the script is completely blocked until the HTML DOM has been loaded. On larger sites with lots of JavaScript, this can cause major performance issues, slowing down your site. <clears throat> This is why async has been added to browsers. Async defer. There are actually two ways we can bypass the problem of the blocking script, async and defer. Let's look at the difference between these two. Async scripts will download the script without blocking, rendering the page, and will execute it as soon as the script finishes downloading. You get no guarantee that scripts will run in any specific order, only that they will not stop the rest of the page from displaying. It is best to use async when the scripts in the page run independently from each other and depend on no other script on the page. <clears throat> For example, if you have the following script elements, You can't rely on the order the scripts will be will, will load in. Uh, jQuery.js may load before or after script2.js and script3.js. And if this is the case, uh, any functions in those scripts, depending on jQuery, will produce an error because jQuery will not be defined at the time the script runs. Defer will run the scripts in the order they appear um, in the page and execute them as soon as the script and content are downloaded. All the scripts with the defer attribute will load in the order they appear on the page. So in the second example, we can be sure that jQuery.js will load before script2.js and script3.js, and that script2.js will load before script3.js. Summarize, if your scripts don't need to wait for parsing and can independently run, or excuse me, and can run independently without dependencies, then use async. If your scripts need to wait for parsing and depend on other scripts, uh, load them using defer and put their corresponding script elements in the order you want the browser to execute. Comments. As the, with HTML and CSS, it is possible to write comments into your JavaScript code that will be ignored by the browser and exist simply to provide instructions to your fellow developers on how the code works. And so if you come back to your code after six months, you can't uh, and can't remember what you did. All right, so comments are very useful and you should use them often, particularly for larger applications. There are two types. A single line comment is written after a double forward slash, uh, for example, as you see in line one, a multi-line comment is written between the strings uh, with the forwards, uh, with the opening and closing uh, comments. And as you see, you have a forward slash and an asterisk and a asterisk and a forward slash to close it. All right, so, 
So if your code, if, excuse me. So for your for so for example, we could annotate our last demo's JavaScript with comments like so. As you can see, we have single line comments, multi line comments. Note, in general, more comments is generally better than less. But you should be careful if you find yourself adding lots of comments to explain what variables are. Your variable names perhaps should be more intuitive or to explain very simple operations. Maybe your code is overcomplicated. Summary. So there you go. Your first step into the world of JavaScript. We've begun with just theory to start getting you used to why you use JavaScript and what kind of things you can do with it. Along the way, you saw a few example, uh, you saw a few code examples and learned how JavaScript fits in with the rest of the code on your website, amongst other things. JavaScript may seem a bit daunting right now, but don't worry. In this uh, course, we will take you through it in simple steps uh, that will make sense going forward. In the next article, we will plunge straight into the practical getting you to jump straight in and build your own JavaScript examples. So we will see you next time. And uh, let's click on next and see where we're going. So next we're gonna see you in a first splash in JavaScript. And uh, just to clarify, that is right here below, what is JavaScript? So a first splash in JavaScript is where we will see you next time. Thank you, goodbye.